Good afternoon. I would like to welcome everyone to the 51st annual James E. McLeod Honors and Awards Program. My name is Cheryl Holland. I am the subject librarian for education, political science and sociology for university libraries. I am also the chair of the McLeod Committee. After a two year break due to COVID, we are once again here to recognize and honor students for their scholarship, leadership and community service in advocating for supporting and ce celebrating black culture. With that said, I would now like to introduce Dean Rob Wild, Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students who will give the opening remark for today's ceremony. Thank you so much, Cheryl, uh, and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rob Wild. I am the Dean of Students and Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs here at WashU, and I use he, him, and his pronouns. It really is an honor for me to be asked to give a few remarks today at the beginning of this ceremony, the first one we've had uh, since 2019. I want to congratulate all of our distinguished honorees this afternoon and thank Cheryl in particular, but also the committee for their outstanding work in preparing for this year's ceremony. The focus of the McLeod Awards is to embrace and recognize all students who are committed to advocating for, supporting, and celebrating Black culture at WashU. The celebration of Black culture at WashU is an important part of our modern WashU tradition. Dean James Earl McLeod, the namesake of today's ceremony, was one of the most significant leaders at WashU from roughly 1980 to, to until his passing in 2011. He was a mentor to me and hundreds of others during that time. During that time, uh, he helped not just with the expansion of academic programs like African and African American Studies at WashU, but also with the development of student programs to recruit talented Black students to WashU and support them while they uh, were here. The most notable of which has been the John B. Irvin Scholars Program celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. Many of you know me, and many of you know that in addition to being an administrator, I'm also a proud graduate of the College of Arts and Sciences at WashU. What some of you don't know about me is that I was also an AFAS major at Washington University. While I think uh, that the growth of programs in Black studies at universities since the 1960s have been important for Black students, I also think they have benefited white students like me. As we celebrate the McLeod Awards, I wanted to share my personal perspective on how I have positively been impacted by Black culture at WashU. Celebrating Black culture on a predominantly white campus does have an impact on white folks. I came to WashU as a new student from a relatively sheltered background in 1989. Um, I grew up in a predominantly white suburb of Rochester, uh, New York, and it wasn't until I came to WashU that I began to really understand the concepts surrounding race and privilege. My exposure to Black people prior to coming to WashU was predominantly in popular culture, so coming to WashU presented me with a real opportunity to stretch, make new friends, and learn. I love my AFAS classes here, classes like the history of racial minorities in the United States, Black psychology, a course taught by Dr. Early called uh, on the Harlem Renaissance. Through those courses, I attended my first Black church service. I went to Black anthology and multiple productions at the Black Repertory, the Repertory Theater here in St. Louis. For me, being a student at WashU helped me better understand not just what it meant to be Black in America, but what it also means to be white. What privileges come with being white? How have I been socialized to be white? How have I developed unconscious bias that affects how I interact with the world? These are hard and confusing concepts for a young white college student to grasp, but they are, were important for me to grapple with when I was younger. The lessons I learned about black culture as a student are lessons that have stayed with me throughout my career. And it would not have happened if I weren't on a campus that was committed to celebrating black culture, just as we are doing today. So I'd like to congratulate again all of today's uh, terrific honorees, the staff mentors, and especially our students. These are some outstanding people being celebrated today, and I'm proud of all of you guys. And I hope that you are, uh, through, through the work that you all are doing around Black culture at WashU, uh, are able to have the impact uh, on, on fellow students the way that 
students when I was here had an impact on me. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to our first presenters. Um, and they are students Jesse Harris Jr. and Ronell Williams. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesse Harris Jr. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a first year at WashU. Hello, everyone. My name is Renell Williams. I am a junior at WashU, and I use she or his pronouns, and I'm majoring in psychology and minoring in women, gender, and sexuality studies. Today, we are presenting the W.E.B. Du Bois Staff Award, Mentor Award. This award is given to a staff member who has demonstrated a commitment to serve as a mentor, advisor, counselor, friend, or parental figure. We are so happy to present this, this award to Dr. Williams. When I first met Dr. Williams, it was clear that she valued me as a Black incoming first year student. During our first advising meeting, not only did she dedicate time to learn about me and my academic interests, but also my, my professional goals. Upon recognition of the connections between her work in the Center for Diversity and Inclusion and my interest, she suggested that I apply for a student position. In addition, to providing me academic support, she also provides me with professional development opportunities. There have been so many occasions where she tasked me with work that challenges my abilities and efforts to elicit professional growth. For instance, this year's Black Affinity Panel, for this year's Black Affinity Panel, I was tasked with, tasked with finding um, panelists and confirming attendance and creating questions for the panel. We've been working remotely due to COVID and we didn't have much of a turnaround time. After I returned to campus and efforts to empower me as a first year black student, she asked if I felt comfortable ho hosting the event. Not only did this sharpen my facilitation skills, but it also made the, pan the panel more meaningful. Having a student host fostered a more comfortable environment for black students and it promoted stronger connections within Washu's black community. Although a singular example, it's representative of her work on campus. Dr. Williams' support of black students stems from a deep sense of love and commitment to the community as a whole. Dr. Williams has been there for me professionally and as a friend during our time together at the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Working with her helped me discover the work environment I want in my future, one of teamwork, support, and safety to challenge myself. For example, she encouraged me to expand my professional skills in areas I had little confidence beforehand, such as creating marketing materials. Dr. Williams also gives me very candid advice. For instance, I once told her how someone added to my already overwhelming stress when they asked for a last minute time consuming favor. She told me how she related to my experiences of feeling the need to prove myself and having to do it all, especially as a black woman in a predominantly white institution. However, she pointed out how I'm already exceeding expectations and how my existence here is enough that I didn't need to prove myself and should focus on letting my light shine through instead. She then helped me make an action plan to decline the request while not over explaining why I was saying no or over expressing remorse. We even role played me saying no until I felt confident to do it myself. Dr. Williams has shown me what it means to show up in a workplace authentically and how to do that confidently as a Black woman, including speaking up for my needs, practicing self-care, and how to say no. I'm so grateful to have her in my corner. Then I believe, Dr. Williams, if you would like to have any remarks, you are welcome to. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So low key, I'm tearing up. Um, Ronella and Jesse are like my faves. <laughs> I was not expecting such awesome remarks. So thank you all very, very much. Um, whew, um, I am so grateful and honored to receive this award. Um, I have had the distinct pleasure of working with six urban scholars this academic year, um, in addition to advising the Black Senior Alliance, the Caribbean American Students Association, Truth, and Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. In addition to that, I just took on another advising role, um, serving as United Greek Council Advisor, so directly supporting our MPHC and NAFO organizations. And I can just say that being an advisor and a mentor to these students has been the most rewarding part of my experience here at WashU. And I'm going to stop talking before I actually cry. So just thank you very much for this recognition. This really means a lot. Of course, thank you so much. And our next presenter is Chris Helbling, subject librarian for English literature. Um, hello, everybody. Um, 
first thing I would like to acknowledge and thank my fellow committee members um, for the Mary McLeod Bethune Award. Um, and they were Felicia Folks and Melissa Vetter. And our committee was, as I said, for the Mary McLeod, sorry, Mary McLeod Bethune Award for leadership. And this is an award given to a current graduate student at Washington University in St. Louis, who through their leadership and service and scholastic achievement and perseverance has served as an inspiration to the university community. And um, this year's winner is Lorenzo Loans. And I, and I saw that he is here today. And I would just like to say um, a few words about Lorenzo before he um, accepts the award. Um, he is uh, completing his PhD in neuroscience this summer. And honestly, I cannot do justice to his achievements with a short introduction, but I'm gonna try with just a couple of highlights so you know him a little bit. During his years here, he strengthened uh, the mentoring pro and tutoring programs uh, to St. Louis area high school students in both St. Louis public and in Jennings districts. And um, he's, for those programs, he's designed original coursework to provide um, the opportunity for these students to learn about neuroscience. Uh, recently, he has also organized uh, fellow black PhD students to write a letter to the NIH outlining six steps to help underrepresented students matriculate into and excel in PhD programs. And I'd like to end with um, the words from one of his references, because I think it sums up Lorenzo well. And that is, Lorenzo is one of the most impressive graduate student leaders I have seen at Washington University in my over 25 years here. And our outreach programs are far stronger than they were before he matriculated. And he will have left an indel indelibly positive impact on Washington University and a gaping hole in our diversity fo focused efforts. So um, congratulations to Lorenzo. And I, I think he may, or would, Lorenzo, would you like to say a couple words? I, I, I guess I'll say uh, I'm thank, uh, thankful and um, I'm honored to be recognized as a, as a student that's uh, uplifting and inspiring black students on campus. Um, this award, you know, more than any other award that I've won here at WashU means a lot just because it reflects you know, one of the principles that I was instilled in me in a very young age, which is, you know, growing up poor, I didn't have a lot, but I was always taught that we had each other and had like my siblings and also looked out for our community. And I think one of the things that I was raised by my grandparents and my um, granddad has since passed. And I, I feel like he would be proud of me, but, I, you know, I think he would say that it's nice that you're getting this fancy degree from this prestigious university, but like, what are you doing for your community essentially? And so um, that's just something that's a governing principle. Um, let, that, that's just a principle that I let just lead my life and just how I interact with people and navigate spaces. And so to be um, recognized as a, as a student that is contributing or making an impact for not just students here, black students here at WashU, but in the greater St. Louis area, it's a tremendous honor. And so I just wanna say thank you to um, Cheryl Holland, the committee, and also to the other awardees and honorees panelists that will be getting recognized today. And it's, a, it's an extreme honor. All right, so congratulations once again to Lorenzo. And I'm gonna stay um, here on the award dais for just a couple more minutes. Um, because our committee also uh, reviewed the applicants for the Wangari Matai Award, and that was for community service. And so it is given to a current graduate student at Washington University who has demonstrated a commit commitment to public service by improving the lives of others, engaging in civic activities, serving local, national, or international communities, and demonstrating selflessness and compassion. And this year's winner is Sh Shayla Vasquez, and Shayla is a PhD student in neuroscience. 
And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Shayla. And again, what I can say only scratches the surface. Um, she's mentored at risk girls through the Sophia project and was the part of the inaugural STEM mentoring arm of that program and later served as the tutor assistant coordinator. And through her work with the WashU Eureka, exploring research uh, careers in the biomedical sciences course, um, and that course, which, which was designed for students from underrepresented backgrounds, she's organized presentations for those students to learn about writing personal statements, contacting principal investigators, and other of the common but often untaught, untaught practices needed for the field. And some words from one of her references as well said that she regularly, regularly demonstrates a strong commitment to outreach, community education, and making sure that both her research and the research of others is disseminated to the public in an approachable manner. Shayla is the best candidate from a commitment to, to diversity efforts perspective of any graduate student I have known. So once I will say congratulations to Shayla once again. Shayla. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for this award. I'm really hoping to continue this type of work in the future and support students, um, especially those who look like me and who've been marginalized and feel like their voices can't be heard in academia, which is so many of us. Uh, and I'm really committed uh, in the future to de dedicate my career to increasing DEI in science and research. And I'm hoping that will be just a lifelong thing for me. Um, it really makes me happy. It definitely brings me joy. And it's something I think about every day. And so if anybody you know, has questions or want to reach out to me, whether you're another student or undergrad, um, my email is open. And uh, congratulations to all the other awardees as well. Thank you. OK, so that's it for Lorenzo and Shayla. Congratulations to them. And I will pass it to our next presenter. And that is Phyllis Jackson, the Interim Executive Director for Campus Life. Good afternoon, and thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Chris said, my name is Phyllis Jackson. I use she, her, her pronouns. And I am currently serving as the Interim Executive Director for Campus Life. And it's my pleasure to present the George Washington Carver Award for uh, humanities research as well as scientific research. I would first like to thank the committee for allowing me to present on our behalf. And the committee consists of Clara McLeod, who is the chair, um, Kim Lipsy, and Rosalind Bradshaw Robinson. So the George Washington Carver Award for research is open to any current undergraduate student at Washington University in St. Louis who has done outstanding, original, and revealing research in any discipline. And we have several submissions and the topics were just so dynamic. I wanted to let you know what our undergrads are doing out here. Um, our submissions were Jeffrey Camille and his research is Black is in Fashion. Nicole Dunkel, Buddhism and Civil Rights Activism in the African-American Community. In Kimjika Imanike, WashU's founder was not an abolitionist, who was William Greenleaf Elliott. Emily Duran Garcia, The Hidden History of Racism in America's Medicine, Stories of Abuse, Exploitation, and Torture of African-Americans. Kamaria Gutter, a system is not a system not for all. How the cover of a 1951 story portraying a damsel in distress illustrates. Eliana Jenkins, when there's no room for just being. History, truth, and philosophy in Black lives. Juste Marisho, hidden in the diaspora, redefining the Black experience. Onyanyichi, on your door, in vitro image, MHC class one binding validation of in silico predicted follicular lymphoma neoantigens. That was a mouthful. And Bonnie Siegel, the face of a movement, profit from protest. And again, we have two winners. 
one in the scientific category and one in the humanities. I will first present the winner in our scientific category. The winner of the George Washington Carver Award for Scientific Research is Onyichi Onyador. She has focused her research on finding a treatment and ultimately a cure for non-Hodgkin lymphoma through immunology. Please join me in congratulating Onyaniche Onyador. And I did see her online. And if you would like to come on and say a couple of words, that would be great. Yes, thank you so much, Ms. Jackson. And thank you so much. I'm uh, to the McLeod Committee yes. for the recognition of this yes. award. I'm honored to receive this George Washington Carver Award. And I would also like to thank my research mentors, Dr. Todd Benneker and Michelle becker hapak without whom none of this research would have been possible. Uh, this award and the McLeod Awards in general mean a lot to me and how it uplifts Black individuals throughout the university. Um, my own mentors have meant so much to me in uplifting me in pursuing my own desire in becoming a physician scientist that can not only treat my patients directly and build the connection with them, especially those black patients that may have never seen a black physician or have felt comfortable going to uh, the doctor because their physician may not necessarily see the entirety of themselves. But also in being able to become a scientist and develop personalized therapeutics that can treat all patients regardless of their own background. And in seeing how much these mentors have meant for me, I likewise strive to give back and support the next generation of physician scientists and physician scientists, and especially aspiring black physician scientists um, in being able to achieve their dreams of becoming an MD, PhD, um, especially if they have exhibited doubt um, in being in an environment that has been historically and currently um, very majority led. So again, just thank you so much. And I'd also like to extend my congrats to the other awardees as well. Thank you so much. Part two of our award, the winner of the George Washington Carver Award for Humanities is Eliana Jenkins. Eliana's research looks at how American history taught as an absolute truth serves as a false narrative for identity ascription and formation. Uh, please join me in congratulating Eliana. And Eliana, if you would like to give us a couple of words, that would be great. Okay, I think I thought I saw her on earlier, but if not, we will move on. Again, congratulations to both of our award winners. And our next presenter is Cheryl Holland, subject librarian for education, political science, and sociology. Thank you, Phyllis. Good afternoon again. I would like to give a special thanks to Jackie Lorraine for her help with the interview process. Today, I will be presenting the John B. Irving University College Civic Engagement Award. This award recognizes a current University College graduate or undergraduate student who has demonstrated a commitment to community service to the Black community and carries a GPA of 3.0 or better. This year's winner is Andrew Barnes. Andrew is a student in the Masters of Liberal Arts program in University College. Andrew is the Communications Administrator for CARE, which stands for Christian Advocates for Racial Equity. With a focus on racial equity, CARE hosts community forums on issues of race with hopes of breaking down barriers and bringing diverse communities together. CARE also holds clothing 
food, book, and backpack drives for children in North City. Andrew has served as a camp counselor and a mentor to inner city youth. Andrew completed an internship for the St. Louis area nonprofit Books for Newborns, which provides local hospitals and low income families with reading materials. And some of his academic projects have included research on Aaron Douglas and the Harlem Renaissance and African American folklore and its impact on contemporary culture. Now we will hear a few words from our winner, Andrew. Thank you very much, uh, Cheryl. Um, <clears throat> thank you to all, all uh, our congratulations to all the winners. Um, this is a great honor, um, especially my grandfather we've, would be very proud of me as well. He just passed not that long ago. And uh, he always told me, you know, make sure you're doing something that you love and make sure he always wanted me to be happy and, and seeing the, um, seeing it, everyone come together to be happy and especially in the diverse uh, communities is what really brings me joy and brings me happiness. So um, I want to continue to do this work uh, and I'm graduating within the next two weeks. So I'm very, very happy. And especially that I was still here to be able to, to accept this award. So um, again, congratulations to everyone who's, who's here today and thank you again. Congratulations. Our next presenter is Wilmetta Tolliver Diallo, Assistant Dean, Academic Coordinator, and Director of Strategic Initiatives. Thank you, Ms. Holland. Um, good afternoon. I would like to thank the other members of the Langston Hughes Committee for their service throughout this process, but I would especially like to thank Riata High School, who helped with our interview process. Before I present the winner, I just wanted to say a couple of words about Langston Hughes. Um, he is most known as a prominent figure of the Harlem Renaissance, but his writings past, span past this period. Throughout his four decades of literary creativity that is virtually unrivaled in American letters, Hughes wrote 50 books, including poetry, drama, autobiography, fiction, prose, comedy, juvenile literature, librettos, and black gospel song plays. Permeating his work is pride in the African American identity and its diverse culture. Likewise, the Langston Hughes Award recognizes a student whose constant involvement in the visual and performing arts or creative writing has contributed to the recognition, reflection, and appreciation of the culture, cultural heritage of Black people on campus and in the St. Louis community. Inspired by Audre Lorde and Kahindi Wiley, this year's awardee is a creative writer but also seeks to elevate the artistic development of all Black students on campus. They are most proud of their creation of a digital museum that celebrated writing, visual, and performing in arts during the pandemic. They have worked with Black Anthology for three years, most recently as the show's producer. Please join me in congratulating Mark Rigel, our 2022 Langston Hughes Award recipient. Mark, will you please say a few words? Hi, Dean Jallo. Um, thank you so much. Um, I am kind of like so excited that I I, I won this. Um, and like, I just want to thank everyone who just has helped me in my like writing slash with BA thus, the, thus far. Um, it is a very collaborative thing, um, but I just appreciate everyone and everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm just very honored to, to have this award. So again, Thank, 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 thank you, everyone. Congrats to, to the uh, other nominees and again, um, and to the winners. And also thank you, Dinjalo, again. Thank you. Congratulations again, Mark. Next presenters are Jacqueline Carter, DEI Program Manager at the Olin Business School, and Thomas Walker, Senior Customer Relationship Manager um, of WashU IT. Good afternoon, everyone. And Jacqueline and I will be recognizing the Nelson Mandela Award. 
name for the anti-apartheid activist who went on to become the first fully democratically elected president of South Africa. This award acknowledges an undergraduate student leader who creates a shared vision, elicits the strengths of others, perseveres in the face of adversity, and inspires a grander vision. The student's leadership may be within the university or outside the community. And again, we would like to recognize all nominees, Aaliyah Allen, Zoe Al Tawiti, Raven Ferguson, Marco Gell, Anya Onyador, and Kennedy Young. We would like to congratulate all those nominees. And now Jacqueline Carter will announce the winner of this award. Thank you, Thomas. I have the opportunity to present a little snapshot of the awardees accomplished, but I would like to say thank you to all the nominees. Our awardee did not wait until for permission to take charge on campus. As a freshman and new to the campus in the unknown city during COVID, he, they decided to create a project, the Black Queer Informative Project, where they survey 190 plus trans and non binary students on, on their experience with pronouns. They were members of organization, but not only members, they were on the executive board for organizations such as Black Anthology, as serving as the publicity chair, creating digital museums, showing the students writing in order of our Black students, the design chair for Pride Alliance, and served as the secretary of the Association of Black Students. They're also a scholar serving as a Mellon Mays undergraduate fellow where their senior honors thesis will examine black queer community resistance in, in the world in St. Louis, Chicago, and New York City. Their campus involvement consisted of serving as a research assistant, a residential advisor, a DNAP STARS mentor, where they advise first generation low income first year students, interning in the CDI, outside organization involvement was involved with the Center for Women in Transition, Nintendo for Africa, Story Stitchers Artist Collective. They are a first generation student and is currently a junior that is also excelling academically. They are determined and have great compassion for and towards others. In the words of the awardee, as a young black queer adult, I feel compelled to advocate for black people, the LGBTQ community and marginalized minority students. Our winner is Mark Rigel. Mark, would you like to say a few words? Um, hi again. Um, I am, I don't know what to say, but, um, I am just very honored, um, again. <laughs> um, and thank you so much, um, Jacqueline and Thomas, y'all are so kind, but yes, I am honored to receive this award as well, but thank you so much. And, um, again, congrats to all the other winners as well. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well-deserved. Thanks, Mark. And again, congratulations to all. I will now turn it back over to Cheryl Holland. I gotta unmute myself. <laughs> well, <clears throat> excuse me, we're, we're finishing kind of early, but this is a good thing. Um, it brings us to the end of our ceremony I'd like to thank all of you who came to support and honor the 2022 recipients of this year's James E. McLeod's Honors and Awards Program. And I would also like to give a very special thanks to the McLeod Committee and all of our campus supporters. And see you all next year where we hope, keep your fingers crossed, we hope to have an in-person ceremony. So, bye.